How do you find the internal volume of a sheet metal enclosure? Well, there's a couple of ways you can do this, but I'm going to show you how to do it using a synchronous technique, which I think is pretty cool. So first things first, let's take the sheet metal enclosure, which is just a box, and make it a little more interesting. Let's change the angle on some of these flanges here, just to make it a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to go and angle that out, and then drag my corner up so that it meets. And then maybe I'll just swing this around and do the same thing on this side. Grab that top face and put a crazy angle on that. Okay, so that'd be a little bit more challenging to manually calculate the internal volume of this. And I'm going to show you how one technique of doing it. First, you got to do is you got to make sure that your part is saved. And then you want to go and create a new assembly with this. You, you can actually do this in an existing assembly if you've got this as part of a larger assembly. It doesn't matter. What we're going to do is we're going to save the assembly and then create a new part which is going to represent the internal volume of our enclosure. I'm going to actually call it enclosure volume. You can make this a reference part so it doesn't show up in any of your parts lists or drawings or anything like that. The important thing is that you want to have a part made and you want to start modeling it as just, it doesn't matter the size, you just want this to be a part that has as many sides as your enclosure does. If your enclosure is more complicated, obviously you need more sides. What you're then going to do is just use your steering wheel and drag this and connect it to all the inside faces um, of your enclosure. So you can generally do this pretty quickly uh, with synchronous. What you may want to do is if you've got crazy angled enclosure, uh, walls like I do, uh, you want to be careful you, want, you get the inside edge, not the outside edge, so that's better. Now I've got some angles in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the relate command, you can actually use this for all walls, but just go to relate, make sure you've got a coincident, pick from your list, and then pick the target wall, and that'll line that up and get the angle right. I'll just do that again on the bottom because that was the other crazy one we had. And again, make sure you get those inside edges. And of course, last thing I want to do is pull this. I have an open-topped enclosure here. I'm going to pull this down to line up with the top there. Okay, terrific. I'm going to close and return back into my assembly, save that, and I am going to ground, first off, I'm going to ground my part so it doesn't move anywhere. Okay. I'm also going to change the display color on that just make it a clear blue or something like that. Okay, so there's the internal, that is now the internal volume of my part. And we can view that by going into the physical property manager. And you can bring volume up here. And there it is there. Now when I update this, um, you can pick some sort of material. It actually doesn't matter in here. Because what we're really just after is the volume. We don't care about the mass unless it's holding water or something like that. So, well, this, the volume of your enclosure is just the volume of your material. The enclosure volume gives you actually the contained volume. Now, there's one more trick I want to show you. If we make edits to this, we want our volume to update. And I'll show you a fast way to do that using synchronous. All you do is you go here to this button, create interpart relationships, and it's going to ask you, click on the part to be driven, and that's going to be our volume. And the driving part, obviously, is going to be our enclosure. So when you do that, it's going to find all those planes that match up together and save them as relationships. What that means is if I, and I can actually do this in the context of the assembly because this is a sheet metal part, but if I grab some of these faces and change the size of my enclosure, add another 5 inches, for example, you see that when I turn back on my volume, that volume's updated, and so will the physical properties in my physical property manager.